Welcome, Daryl, to Survivors. Today, we'll be discussing substance abuse. Mm -hmm. Daryl, uh, why would, in your opinion, would someone turn to substance abuse? Why would they look to abuse any type of substances? Right. Nobody looks to abuse any substance. What right. happens is that people have issues, challenges, difficulties, problems, whatever you call it, and they look for a way of coping with it. Okay? And as we know, alcohol in particular, or other substances, but let's, let's just look at alcohol as a good example because a lot of people do it. Um, alcohol has a way of numbing the senses temporarily so that you are able to get over the emotional burden, the emotional baggage of whatever you're going through. So people usually begin using a substance as a means of escape and therein the problem can lead further down the road to become abusive and to become, in, in cases with alcohol, alcoholism and serious drug addiction and so on. What would you recommend for someone who's actually going through some type of uh, drug abuse situation right now? From a psychological mm -hmm. point, what, what are some steps that they can take from, uh, for, as measures to gain back control of their lives? Okay, one of the most difficult things to do with a person when you're, when you're abusing any substance is to admit you have a problem. And that often is the most challenging step for people to overcome. Most people tend to feel I can stop if I really want to and I'm just doing this you know, on my own steam and I don't have a problem. Okay, so the very first thing that I think a person who may suspect that they might be an abuser to do is to admit to themselves or to, to, to take stock and to see, look, am I really in control of this thing? What, am I, what are the people closest to me saying? What's happening to the things that I need to do, my responsibilities, my work and family and so on? How is it impacted? And once a person can do that honest self-evaluation, then there's a chance that they may admit and realize that they need to do something about it. But what are some major signs of, that, that you know you're addicted to a substance? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, very definitely when you need it. Right. <laughs> all right? If in the case of alcohol again, for example, if you, your body is calling for it, if you want it all the time, um, if you know, I mean, depending upon how often you use as well, um, if you're using any particular substance every day, for example, and that's, that's just an example, that's not a rule, but just an example, as often as several every day. Several times a day. And several times per day, all right? Then definitely you're a Muscle candidate. Concentration. Yeah, you should be checking, okay? Yeah. You definitely need to be checking the impact it's having, as I said, upon your responsibilities. Do you get to work on time? Are you able to do your job properly? And by properly, I'm not meaning that you, whether you, you, you scrape through it, but whether you're actually be able efficient. to... Yes, to be efficient and so on. And, um, you know, what are the people closest to you saying? Because typically, family, spouses, lovers, children, and so on, are usually the first ones to point out that there's something wrong. And okay. if they're seeing something wrong, that's not a voice that you should ignore. What are some coping strategies for, first of all, the person who's actually addicted to the substance, and then, secondly, the family members? Because, you know, most of the times, drug abusers have a severe impact, a traumatic experience, mm -hmm. an impact around the people that they love. Yes. So what are some coping strategies for both parties? Okay. Um, well, first thing, as I said, if you realize that there is a problem, the problem requires attention. And again, we never ever recommend that a person try to deal with that kind of problem by themselves, all right? So you probably need to be assessed um, to see, to determine, you know, what was the extent of your problem. In, in some cases, people need to go through a detoxification period, for example, and um, they may do anything from an in-house treatment, depending upon what the substance is and, and how severe, to maybe just talking with somebody about it and working it through there. For persons who are abusing alcohol, there are the 12-step programs, Alcohol Anonymous, um, and, and so on. There, so there are programs around where persons can go and achieve, you know, get some sort of a victory. Yeah. over these, these bonds. And, and the family members who want to know how to cope and support, what, what, what are some strategies or steps that they can use in to support this person who has this issue? Yeah. Most important thing for family members to do is to, first of all, educate themselves, okay, as to exactly what the problem is. Because when a person becomes dependent on a substance, they lose a certain amount of control. They're no longer, I mean, they, they may appear to you to be the same person you've known, but they don't have the same level of self-control that the average person has. And a family member will not understand that unless they understand the nature of the problem which comes through education. Secondly, the person, while they do need firm support, they always are going to need compassion. Persons who have become so desperate that they, you know, using some substance, they may lose a sense of hope in themselves 
And sometimes they might just need that one person next to them to give them that confidence that you know they're still there for them, they're not alone, they're not going through the journey so by themselves. Exercise a little patience. Yes, so definitely compassion, education, compassion, patience, understanding. Is religion, does religion play a part of it in recovery process for some people? It can, it can. Um, in the uh, in the twelve step program, the alcohol anonymous and so on, the, one of the steps is to um, basically to make sort of peace with your higher power. I think that's right. the term that they actually use, but we understand it as God. And in our, in our final moments, mm -hmm. do you have any words of wisdom for those who are facing an addiction right now? Seek assistance for it, all right? Do that honest evaluation, first of all. Be honest with yourself. Don't just try to keep it in and tell yourself, you know, you have everything under control. The people around you will tell you, you will know from your own behavior, your own signs in terms of your work, responsibilities and so on and do something about it. Take ownership of it. Don't allow it to control you. And is there anywhere you can recommend for places for help, like any institutions for drug addiction? Yes, um, there, there's a number of different centers. Um, probably we could make a listing of them available or something like that because there's a number of different... I'm not going to remember everything everywhere off the you top have of any, like, If you like one or two on the top of your head, you can mention. Um, I know there's Families in Action, for example, all right, where they offer that Serenity, kind of please. community service and so on. Yeah. And of course, there's Mount St. Benedict, where they run, they do in-house drug rehabilitation. And there's a number of other centers around. Okay, thank you, Daryl, for You're coming welcome. and sharing your wisdom on surviving drug addiction. You're welcome.